what it means to play lacrosse at Hopkins, I, I guess is something different to, to each guy. Playing lacrosse here, um, you know, I think there, there's two, two things that, that come to mind is the sense of responsibility and a sense of pride. Hey, I'm a part of this thing. This is really pretty unbelievable. I need to work really hard to continue this and I want to pass this on. I think any one of us that's ever played here or plays here now uh, understands you're a part of something bigger than all of us. You play for probably the most storied program um, in the country. We're pretty lucky to uh, be a part of something that's you know goes back and is way bigger than and then also a national powerhouse and uh, always been known Hopkins lacrosse. I think that it means uh, trying to play for the team, trying to add to the legacy. You know, they all come to us as high school Americans, three, four year starters for their high school program. And yet here, when they get here, they all start over and have to prove themselves again. So that journey uh, from the freshman year to the, to the senior year um, is, is, is again um, a lot different for each individual. You've been waiting your whole career for this. Yeah. 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 Your whole career for this. Yeah. Let's be physical. Gotta be relentless today. Starts there, gotta be Let's relentless. Go. Everything's gotta mean something. You know the priorities from the scouting reports. Know the hands. Fellas, let's go finish the game. Oh! The game itself is a Native American sport. Um, when it started, uh, we probably really don't know because the, the Western settlers saw it playing here, the, uh, the uh, Canadians and the Americans, in mostly in Ontario and upstate New York. The stick, in many ways, didn't really have a pocket. It was almost like something that you could bat the ball with. There were virtually no limitations as far as the number of players. The field could stretch over several miles. It was oftentimes used to uh, settle disputes. How it got down here in Baltimore, as I guess would be referred to as your classic uh, historical accident. In 1878, approximately, members of the uh, Baltimore Athletic Club uh, went to uh, Newport, Rhode Island for a track meet. During the summer, I believe it was. And while they were there, they saw lacrosse being played. There were a lot of sports being played there at the time. They really liked what they saw. So they um, imported equipment, rules, brought it back to Baltimore, and they started playing it. I'm knowing how the city is. It used to be a very closed provincial city. You know, if you walked uh, 10 miles outside of Baltimore, you'd fall off the edge of the world. So um, they, they could do things that nobody else did, and they wouldn't see the significance of it. So picking up lacrosse would not have been a big uh, deal that way. I started co coming here to watch Hopkins play in the 40s when I was a little kid. The games were free, they charged nothing, and all the kids in the neighborhood came, and you could see the best teams in the country. Lacrosse has always been important here. Even when I went here in the 50s, the players on the team always said, and it's still true, lacrosse is king at this place. <laughs> Field, the 2012 season just underway. As the season starts earlier and earlier. Palmer from the sideline cuts inside, feeds Bolin, who rockets it by Wes Cavage. Down the right side is Coppersmith. Shot down low with Bimol and snuck it in there. Here's Rannigan quickly inside. Zach Palmer with the goal. It's a decent half. We didn't play great, but it's a decent half. You showed some character battling back and gaining the lead. I like that. He's in that locker room telling him you're in better shape than they are. They've out conditioned you. We're a very private group. Uh, for us to be doing this with you right now is very unlike us. We got to buckle down, put our chin strap on, and dig in and get a stop. You understand yeah, 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 yeah. this? I was proud that you did it at the end. This is our thing. My freshman year I had an ankle injury, kind of mid-season, a high ankle injury that I was battling with. My junior year I tore my ACL, uh, that obviously put me out for the whole year. 
My sophomore year of the year prior, I had some academic issues. Chris was forced to watch what he loved most. The whole process of, you know, from the moment you get hurt and hearing that you're going to be out for the year and uh, a year where I could have really helped the team. It's different. The feeling you have of being a part of it is, is different. It's, it's tough. When you go home and you talk about the practice. And watching your team go through the ups and downs of the season and knowing you can't really do anything about it and you can't help out is probably the toughest thing of all. Um, just standing there and watching. And how hard it was or how good it was or how much, you know, do you, do you remember when coach got upset or do you remember when, you know, we did this and do you remember that play? It's hard to participate in those conversations because you weren't out, weren't out there doing it. He's really worked hard, you know. He's definitely had some ups and downs in, in the career with his injuries. Because I always wanted to be a part of this team. And I knew that when I had a chance and opportunity that I would make the most of it um, if I could stay healthy. He's our leader uh, in every way in the offensive end. Zappo, the short stick on Bolin. He goes right past him, turns the corner, takes the shot and scores. Acrobatic finish by Chris Bolin. He's got four here in the season opener. Bolin sort of uh, motioning towards his uh, left shoulder there as he heads off the field. And obviously anytime Chris Bolin goes down, people look towards the knee area, but that one upper body injury there. It's around one defender, feeds it behind to Wells Stanwick in front. Brandon Bench shoots it down low and scores. What a feed by Stanwick. And the Blue Jays open 2012 with the victory here tonight, a convincing one. Listen, you, you'll, you'll learn tonight guys get hurt. Do you understand that? Yes. Means you guys got to get off your ass. We've always had a next man up uh, philosophy. That's why we recruit. That's why we practice. That's why we uh, expect uh, the same uh, from each and every guy. We got our first game under our belt, okay? Now we should just go play the way we're supposed to. If you lose a guy, you can plug another guy in and he can fit into that philosophy. I'm proud of you. It's a good step. We got a lot, we got a lot of better lacrosse that we got to play. The team that we're playing Tuesday is better than the team that we played tonight. Our ultimate goal here at Hopkins year in and year out is to win a national championship. So we're talking about that. Our ultimate goal is a national championship and everyone in the locker room is, you know, has that same vision. Our expectations have nothing to do with what your expectations or what the media or what the parents or what the alumni are. One has nothing to do with the other. We all come here knowing that the goal here is to be competitive at a championship level and to win championships. We come here, we, I, listen, I know we're not gonna win every year. I'd be a fool to think that. But we should be competitive at that level. You know, we, we have the resources, we do. I don't hide from that. Morning. Morning. I don't know if you took cream. Hi, you reached Dave Petromile in the Johns Hopkins men's lacrosse office. If you'd leave a message after the tone, I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for calling. Have a great day. David's intense. He's a hard worker. He'll never ask anyone on the staff to do anything he wouldn't do. You know, the big guy, he's just nose down, full steam ahead the whole time. If you walk past the stadium, uh, and there, you don't have to look and see if Hopkins is practice. All you have to do is listen to uh, uh, Coach Petromala yelling. Who the came off? Who came off? Hey, Lee! Lee! Enough! You're killing us down here. Come on, pal. He goes into a great deal of detail. A thing that all coaches do, but uh, something that he still does, even though he was a great player. We said we had some concerns facing off. We, got, we need to let some guys grow and develop. They will. So we said we had to steal some possessions. You lose four face-offs. Well, we steal four back in the riding game. 
So we did a really good job, except for here. 1989, when I was a sophomore and he was a senior, I, I definitely, you know, you, who's thinking 20 years ahead? And I definitely never thought we'd be you know, on the same staff. David was, um, the best thing he did, I mean, he was a great lacrosse player, everybody knows that, but uh, he was really well-rounded. So as good as he was, uh, you know, playing the ball, which is what he was known for, and his stick work, he was very, very good off the ball and communicating. He doesn't talk about it a lot. Um, he doesn't talk about him as a player a lot or how good he was. I, obviously, we all know that, you know, he was one of the best players to ever play. Um, but I guess it kind of, we, really, we don't really think about it too much. You know, he's our coach. You know, we don't really think about him as a player as much as you might think. But in the back of our mind, we know, you know, it's, it's easier to listen to him because he, he, he's done it before. He's played defense here and he's been great here. So, you know, what he says, he knows how to win, both as a player and a coach. I would tell you my experience as a player and as a coach are worlds apart. Um, you know, first and foremost, I'm in a much different place in my, in my life now as a 44-year-old than I was as a 17-year-old. Say hi to Coach Zimmerman. This was Daddy's coach. Coach Zimmerman did a lot for Daddy. You know, that experience as a player, I, I, comparing it to being a coach, I think it was a lot easier. Um, now, our guys might tell you differently th these days with the, 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 the way we work and the things we do. You know, you went out in game day and I, I had control over exactly what I was doing. Whereas now I have a much greater sense for what Coach Zimmerman was going through, uh, especially with a player like me. Games for me are like having the flu. Start to finish, boys, start to finish. Your stomach's upset, you're worried, you're concerned about things. We're done with the nonsense. I don't think I'm the only coach that, uh, that feels that way. So the good thing is we get another opportunity to make some corrections and, his, and, and improve as a team. Let's not be half in and half out. Let's not have two guys in Texas and everybody else in Crash. Okay, it's not a one-man job. Don't be nervous. Go play. Go play. You whack the snot out of him. Run, run, run! That's a good shot. Look inside. Look inside. Give it a look. Beasley's gone over the first time Beasley was wide open. So, hey, if he's pressured, start a little wider. Okay, and if he doesn't pressure, step in. If he does, then you got a little space. Obi Wan! Obi Wan! He's on your he's on your right hip, not your left hip, okay? Mike, he swim moving you, Mike. Guy, hey, hey, he swim moves you. Hey, you put one right in his belly. Catch the ball. Let's stop being casual and let's be fundamentally sound. We gotta get back to basics. You know, that experience as a player, I, 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 comparing it to being a coach, I think it was a lot easier. Um, now our guys might tell you differently. We're gonna find out if we learned our lesson from Sunday. I wanna see a better second half. Let's go win the first five minutes. Press it, John, press it, John, press it, John. We're taking X away, right? So they have no way to go from one side to the other, so the only way they can go is through. John Rannigan, Chris Poland, Rob Guida, Good luck this weekend. Good luck this weekend. Good luck this week. Good luck Saturday night. Don't expect me to be a nice guy this week. Hell no. I, I enjoy the games. I don't enjoy the games nearly as much as I enjoy practice. You get to be with the guys. You get to, you know, you get to push them. You get to get after them. You get to put your arm around them. You get to laugh with them. You get all those things, and the next day you get to come back and do it again. talked about breaking streaks all year. Princeton, we, 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 we had, had a lot of success for a while and then trended downward again. Happy for our guys. Happy for our guys, for me and my staff, we gotta start thinking about Manhattan right now.
Have you ever been a part of Shut Up before? Uh, I can't remember. I don't even know. I, who knows? But maybe I don't know. Well, yeah, you know, it's, it's nice to have a shutout. We've got a pretty talented goalie, so I'm, I'm pleased that we didn't give up a lot of quality opportunities. Well, Johns Hopkins is a very proud program, you know, and we've had victories over uh, many of the teams that we've played. Uh, you know, all of the teams we've played, uh, there are teams that we've just gone back and forth with. You know, one year we win, the next year they win, the next year we win, the next year they win. You know, it's a two-year trend, um, but we hit a little stretch here where we were trending downward a little bit with some of those better teams. Uh, you know, Syracuse, we lose five in a row. And, you know, when you're at Johns Hopkins, you hear about that. One, two, three, three, three. let's go! short period of time and we go through it where twice I believe we have three games in eight days. You go from having uh, about a month of practice every day preparing for uh, the preseason and everything and then you get to your first game and then the next day is a pregame for the next game and you go through those next games and it just flies by. We wanted to win for our seniors and make sure that they didn't go out not having beaten Princeton or Syracuse and definitely get those monkeys off her back. These past couple years, they've been rare around here, getting those big wins. Um, and we just have to build off those each week. The class is called 20th Century China. It's in, I, can't, I don't even know the name of the building. It's, it's in uh, just a big classroom. Democracy is part of what they're talking about, but more they're talking about what Joe and I represent. He did not represent democracy, he represented the same thing. Full history course, at that pretty much just covers 20th century China starting from uh, 1905 or so, and we went uh, all the way up to about the uh, Tiananmen Square. As of 78, they shook down so that Deng Xiaoping and his, his boys were in charge. I'd say a typical day, I'm waking up at about 8.15 or 8.30, uh, typically cook breakfast with a few of my roommates, and then I'll go to class for a few hours. I might go anywhere from uh, 10 o'clock to 2 or so, and I'll typically have at least a little break to be able to get some lunch. And then I'll have to practice at about 2 o'clock. You think about Johns Hopkins University and all the, the wonderful things and spectacular things that happened at this place. The, 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 the Nobel Prize winners that we have here in our faculty and the uh, world-class students that come here and graduate. Probably relax for maybe an hour and then I'll go either to the library or up to my room and, and do work until uh, it's time to go to bed, whenever that is. He's not always the most vocal guy out there, you know, giving pregame speeches. First and foremost, by example, uh, I try to just go out and work as hard as I can every day. But when he talks, you know, in practice or, you know, during a game or something, you listen to him. Every guy's one play away uh, from going into the game. And so I think that it doesn't matter if you're a starter, second string, wherever you may be on the depth chart. What we hope a guy like Tyler does is show to everybody, hey, you keep working, you keep doing the job. Your t you never know when your time is gonna come. And the worst thing that can happen is your time comes and you haven't prepared for it. And he sets a great example for guys, younger defensemen that are looking up to him. You know, Tyler's always at the front of the line for any drill we do and you can, it's interesting to see, you can always see uh, some of our younger freshman defensemen following right behind him in line. And I don't think that that's by accident. And sometimes when you're not a guy that has that reward of playing on game day and you feel like well my role I don't have that kind of role on this team so I don't have to work as hard we're trying to teach them that yes you do have to work as hard and your time you never know when it might come and no matter what if you're not playing your job is to make everybody else on this team better and that's an important role and I think Tyler exemplifies that I've never started or anything like that but uh, I still am a senior, I've still uh, played a considerable amount, I still go out and practice uh, every day and try my all. And so I think it's a tough balance of trying to take care of my job and trying to 
improve my abilities every day while still trying to have a leadership role and trying to make sure that especially uh, with some of the younger guys that I help them uh, develop and help them improve. Zappo, the short stick on Bolin. He goes right past him, turns the corner, takes the shot and scores. Acrobatic finish by Chris Bolin. He's got four here in the season opener. I remember falling and at first actually I thought it was my head because I woke up a little, or I got up a little dizzy. And uh, as my adrenaline kind of slowed down, I was walking towards the sideline, I kind of just could feel something there it wasn't right. And I got to the sideline, and as soon as a doctor put his hand up my shirt, he, uh, you know, kind of broke the news to, uh, to me. So I, I knew something wasn't right when I fell. It, you just got to be around the guys and, you know, out there every, every minute of practice. Um, you know, putting your arm around guys' shoulders when they need it and kind of giving them a kick in the butt when they need it. Um, and that's what I've done. I try to get up here early to get my rehab done and out of the way before practice starts so I'm not doing it while practice is going on. And I just, you know, stay out there, stay involved. It's funny because I've never actually played at Virginia, uh, at Clockner. Um, and this is another opportunity that's slipping by me. But, you know, it, it's I'm glad we're winning at the same time. You know, it's frustrating that I'm out there, but... You know, we're 7-0 right now, number two, two team in the country with a great opportunity to play the number one team in the country. Um, so, you know, the team's first, absolutely, but, you know, I'm thinking in the back of my head, I'm ready to get back. They're the best team in the country right now, according to the rankings. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely a little extra added motivation. You know, go down there in their place. We haven't won down there in 14 years. Are we right down in here? Thank you. Hey, by the way, you haven't beaten Virginia down there since 1998. That's pretty amazing if you think about it. Um, for a Hopkins team to, you know, haven't won in a stadium they're going down and playing every other year for 14 years. The question is, do you use those trends that have kind of gone against you as motivation? Well, sure we have. We did this year. Um, as a coach, as a player, I would tell you you'd rather not. It's not normal for by Hopkins standards, at least. Right. Here we go. We are underway between number one Virginia and number two John Tompkins. Now Rob Emery splitting down the left pipe. Slide comes early on him. Feeds out to Briggs. Locks it. Oh! First. Cast the rock out front to Emery, split dodge as he makes the catch, swims under a check, down the score! Rob Emery, the tally kid! Puts his palm to the turf to keep his balance, now down the left pipe, spinning feet on top, great look for Bocklet, who plays it bottom right corner! Just take it one possession at a time and, you know, not really worry about, you know, what the score is until, you know, kind of when it gets to the end. Hopkins feeds the crease and bends alone on the right pipe and he fires high to low to score. 15 yards away from the hardware, feeds it to Guida. Now a touch on top shot, score! Brandon Finn with a casual fist bump. Riley, who is an outstanding freshman defensive midfielder, one of the best they've had in a long time, picks it up, creates a break. Virginia's not going to leave a short stick, they're going to give the pole a shot, he finishes. Kugler gets inside, ducks it, fires right-handed, and another body save made by Hopkins goalkeeper Pierce Bassett. Harbison was cutting through the box, got pushed in the back, now they give it right side to Buckley, an overhand shot, and another save by Bassett. Guido loads up the right hand and buries it. Oh, he smoked it past Rob Fortunato. Some, some pretty exciting lacrosse. Anybody that says we, we're not willing to play fast, they can watch this game. Stanwick, top of the square, 50 seconds left on the EMO. They give it right side, Guida, shot, score! He'll start his dodge against Durkin. Stanwick gets hit in the head, no call. Stanwick on top of the cage, fires low inside the game! The All-American taking over! Palmer still with it, looking to feed. Palmer faking the passes. Game tied at eight, Palmer up the right pipe. Oh my goodness! He shot a one-handed blazer to the upper right corner. And Hopkins answers. Four minutes onto the clock, into overtime we go. Stanwick gets double team. turns away from the rack. Stanwick still serving, feeds the crease, and it almost got to the stick of Matt White. It goes out of bounds. Guida up the left pipe, feeding out front. Greeley touches it on top to Rannigan. Rannigan gets inside, fires, and scores! Hopkins has ended Virginia's undefeated season. John Rannigan, the All-American, crushes the fans at Clockwork. Once I got this the ball, I knew that I had to shoot the ball overhand low because I couldn't find the uh, back of the net all game. I was shooting the ball kind of, kind of like a, like a jerk. So um, 
So I knew, I knew if I shoot the ball overhand low, you know, I have a good percentage of putting it in. And uh, once I saw the back of that move, I couldn't be happier. very well. I'm ahead of schedule. Um, I have full range of motion. I've been shooting and doing some stick work, so uh, I'm making progress. Um, next week, I think, is the week I'll be thrown back into things full go, so I'm itching to get back out there, of course. I think Coach did a good job of bringing us down. We, we, we all know what we got ahead of us. We, we still got a tough stretch of games with uh, UNC and Maryland and obviously Loyola and Navy and Army, um, but yeah, he, he did a good job bringing us down in practice, not letting us get too comfortable, and uh, we're focused right on UNC right away. You hear the old cliches, you know, one game at a time, and we take it day by day, and, you know, there's a reason why coaches always say that. So after the Virginia game, the first thing I said in the huddle was that, hey, great game. I'm really proud of you guys. Enjoy it for tonight because we got Carolina next. The roar in the stadium when someone scores. Um, I think that playing in front of that is just one of the best things that I've ever experienced. The reason why we decided to play in, in uh, these uh, um, uh, you know, multiple game uh, um, afternoons where there's two or three games or these uh, off-site uh, games at professional venues uh, is, is we're in a win-win situation there. Number one, the opportunity to play in a professional venue where or that's like wh where the Final Four is played in, why wouldn't you want to put your team in a position where they're getting a sense for what that's like? You know, in the end, the goal is to compete for and win a national championship. So you want to do things that are going to allow you, if you're fortunate to get there, to feel comfortable in that envir environment. So we want to put our guys in stressful situations where, you know, we got to turn around quick games and, and play one after another after another. Well, the Final Four is Saturday and Monday. Short turnaround. It's helpful. Playing in a professional venue gives us an opportunity to go into a pro locker room. When, when and if we're fortunate enough to get there, we're not walking through the tunnel looking around going, oh my gosh, look at this place. We've done it not once, but we've done it twice during the regular season. Uh, we've played in front of larger crowds. We've played in front of 20, 30, 40,000 people. So we're not unaccustomed to that. And we play in front of larger crowds here, but we just don't hold as many. Um, we've played on TV. So really it's preparation for an environment. It's preparation for a playoff scenario. It's preparation for a Final Four environment. It's like nothing else, you know, it, it walking out there and just being in a professional venue and, you know, where professional athletes walk through the hallways and, and they're sitting in your lockers, you know, at some point. And then just to walk out there and to have, you know, all the stands pretty much full. I'll take the blame in regards to your play. That team just did you a favor because they showed you every inadequacy you have when you don't play hard. We had two freshmen absolutely embarrass a veteran defense. We should be ashamed of ourselves there. Nothing this week in practice. You got your ass kicked all week, didn't you? You were beat the minute Virginia ended because you weren't mentally tough enough to get beyond it. Be a man. You got your ass kicked, didn't you? Yeah. You got our work, didn't you? Yes. Yes? Yes. Be a man. Take your hat off. They outworked you. It felt good to be back, you know, playing out there in front of this in this venue, you know, with against a good team is, you know, gonna be exciting. Um, but as far as the loss goes, I mean we gotta move on. We got a game Thursday. Well, after our 
our performance on Sunday, um, you know, we, we should have been angry. And to be honest with you, we went after the guys on Monday. We went after them on Tuesday. And we went after a little bit on Wednesday. Um, practice, right? We had a little bit of a different week of practice. And we didn't have your normal pregame practice yesterday. If we're going to perform well against a team in College Park, we're going to have to, you know, we're going to have to perform well for 60 minutes, not three quarters like we did today. Maryland and Hopkins have been for a long time two of the top programs in the country. That's, um, you're going to have a pretty good, uh, pretty big rivalry and a, and a pretty bitter one sometimes. And um, well, at least in recent years, it's been extremely one-sided. It's a program, program! Even though Hopkins is dominated, it's still a very strong, really long standing and a very fierce rivalry. Getting into trouble in two times. One, when the ball dies and we play too slow. And two is when we try to play too fast and we just force them. Okay? Nobody's got to do any more than run by a guy and throw it to the next guy. just lost a tough game. You lost a game you should have won that you gave to them. Our better players didn't show up when it mattered most. <laughs> Some didn't show up at all. Can't win without your better players, so what we gotta do is sit you guys down then. I'm most disappointed in what happened in the fourth quarter. You got quiet got scared and you played this game afraid to lose it rather than wanting to win it. Tell you what, the coaches didn't do it today. It was you guys. It's not the end of the world, it happens. We're nine and two. And we got three games left. And we can be th we, we, we can be twelve and two. But we're not gonna be twelve and two with this group right here the way you are right now. We should have walked through the door Someone should have sat this team down, and someone should have said, Navy, enough of the b Let's do our job. Let's get back to basics. But no one did. You got a choice. Your season can go right in the toilet real fast. Or you can decide that your co the coaches are right. We're not being well led. We're not demanding guys to work hard enough. We're not doing the right things under pressure. You gotta be better. You gotta be better in pressure situations. As simple as that. How do you do that? You jump well, obviously, how you do it, the head coach has gotta do a goddamn better job. Pardon my language. Well, this is this is the third season right now. For us, it's fall. It's one. Winter is two, and we consider winter a season. It's an important part of what we do. Uh, the third season is is obviously the regular season. And then uh, the fourth one is, you know, like four quarters of a game is, is the playoffs. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it, again, it's been, uh, it's been a year of a lot of growth. Dealt with a lot of adversity. That's got to be the way we play. That's got to be, uh, you know, a, very common for us is, is that we practice that way every day, no matter who the opponent is. As you're headed into that, you know, last season, push and start playing for your best of All right, I am rolling. How would you uh, best describe the month of April for this team? Uh, you know, I, I think the way I would describe the, the month of April has been inconsistent. Um, you know, and there have been a lot of highs and lows, and but it's been hopefully a, a great learning process for us. You know, we, uh, we win some big games, and then uh, we turn around, we lose to, to Maryland, and we lose to... Uh, uh, to Navy. And we turn around and we beat number one Loyola and then, you know, you're, you're up again.
again. So there's been a lot of a lot of peaks and valleys in this uh, in this April. Um, but uh, hopefully the most important thing is we can start playing our best lacrosse as we're moving forward. Just for us to be able to go over there, and that Loyal is a great team, no, no doubt about it. And they deserve the number one ranking, and we, we did a good job. And just it, it means a lot to our program to get that win and get back on track heading into May and building that momentum that you need to be successful and make a deep run. Coming off a Maryland loss in Navy, um, you know, we were a little unsure of ourselves and where we stood as, as a team. And we went back to work and uh, got back to little details. When you win a game against number one, uh, it certainly helps develop and build confidence. Uh, you know, and everybody wants to talk about the next season. And for us, it's Army. Were there times when you thought maybe this day would never come, the way your, your career here is going? Oh, yeah, certainly. Uh, every year, everybody keeps joking, oh, this is the third senior day, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's been a while, and I'm, and I'm glad. You know, the whole atmosphere, all your parents coming out and, and walking us out is, is great. It's something I've been a part of um, for, for a good bit. Chris Bowen. With my brother and now me. So it's, it's certainly special. And to get, well, you know, a lot of seniors in to the game and, and, and contribute is, is, is even better. Sometimes I think we take for granted the things that are around us every day or we're a part of every day we can tend to not look upon as seriously or as uh, positively as we could. You know, and the fact that Johns Hopkins has, you know, tonight made its 41st straight NCAA tournament. <laughs> When you stop and think about that, and then you recognize it's the it's a record for all Division One sports in, in in any sport, um, and you you start to think that we're a part of that, and this team added to that rich tradition and that long line of success. That's absolutely phenomenal. We knew we were going to get called, um, but just hearing our name and being and being told who we're going to play. Um, is something very special and very unique to be a part of it, you know, this many times in a row, too, at Hopkins. So that, that's something certainly that's special. Everybody comes here to win a national championship, and if you don't do your job throughout the season, you're not going to have that opportunity. So that's something very special and we're, we're all excited about. All I want is for us to go down to Navy and play our best lacrosse. Yeah, boys. <coughs> Someone beats us, then great. Then we'll go home, shake their hands, and that'll be that. But someone's got to beat us. Doesn't matter who we play. I don't care. You shouldn't care. If we play Maryland again, everybody's going to want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. We'll deal with our practice. We'll talk when this locker room door is shut. Everybody will tell you they don't look at it, but you know, you see the bracket in each side of it. and. Uh, you realize who you're going to get next, who you're going to get down the road. My initial reaction was we, we now know who our opponent is and we now know who we can go prepare for. Your opponent right now means nothing. You know, it could be, you know, it can be anybody. The bottom line is you play and win, you move on, you play and lose, and you go home. So there's a finality to it um, that brings anything and everything out of a competitor. And the Blue Jays will be in the white uniforms, trimmed in blue with the blue helmets. They'll attack the goal to our left. The Maryland Terrapins in the all black uniforms, trimmed in red. Here's Drew Snyder coming back to his left. Takes the shot up high and scores. And Maryland has tied it at one. 15 seconds to go, shot up high, and Drew Snyder buries it. Gives the Terps the lead late. Snyder gets inside of his defender, takes the shot and scores. And now some open space for Maryland into the offensive end. Down the right side, the shot up high and the goal. Snyder down the left side. Snyder with some room, scores again. Pass inside, coming wide open, and he scored. And the Hopkins struggles offensively continued. They couldn't figure out how to beat that defense. And then once they fell behind, Maryland controlled the tempo. What Dave Petromala said, we can't let them do. They did from the get-go. And will be frustrating for the Jays today. They were the number two seed, but uh, whether it's fair or not, it is Hopkins. And uh, the talk is always about getting to Final Fours and getting to the championship game. Losing hurts and it sucks. And nothing good about it, nothing enjoyable about it. I don't apologize for what our expectations are here at Johns Hopkins. I don't apologize for us setting a goal to win a national championship. And this team was good enough to go to a Final Four. It's a simple game. 
have to do the right things. You have to do the things you've been taught to do. And we made too many mistakes that we haven't been taught to do. But in the end, they played harder. In the end, they played harder and they played smarter. They just, they played better. We did not. And for our seniors, I'm sorry for that. And everybody, every one of us in this room is responsible for it. We have become a team that allows circumstance to dictate what we do. We can't allow circumstance to dictate what we do in life. We have to do what we're supposed to do and what we know to do. That has more to do with life than this game today. Circumstance dictated to us. Well, geez, we're down, we're going to press out. But that's not what we do versus circle. Circumstances, we're down a couple of goals. Well, we got to push it, try to make a play. That's not what we do. You're down on your luck. You need money. You find a wallet on the street. It's got a license and $100 in it. Because you're down on your luck. It doesn't mean it's okay to take the wallet and take the money. The right thing to do, and you know the right thing to do, is to return it, correct? Yes. You don't let circumstance dictate to you. And today we allowed circumstance to dictate us. And the circumstance was we were down. So we got tight, we pressed. We tried to do too much. We didn't want our guy to be the one that scored the goal, so we didn't want to get in and support. We're good enough to win 11 games. We're good enough to win that game. And yet we've not relearned how to win that game. So in the end, we didn't do our job two years in a row when it mattered most. And that's what we have to relearn. To do our job when pressure's on. To do our job when things aren't easy. But we earned the loss. They earned the win. Well, to be honest with you, it hasn't really quite hit me yet. It's, uh, I was talking with Chris about it, and it's just kind of coming in spurts every now and again. You know, like walking up here to the locker room, that's that's rough to think about that, you know, you'll never do that again. It's funny because Marshall and I were walking down the hallway and we just looked at each other like, this is weird coming back in here. And, you know, like I said, it's all starting to sink in, you know, walking in here and seeing empty lockers. At Navy, uh, I was kind of overwhelmed a little bit. And, you know, I had my moments where you know, in the back of my head, I realized this was the end. When that, when you fall short and when you don't accomplish your goals, it definitely stings a lot more. There were a lot of, a lot of tears in our locker room after that game. The, the not winning is, 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 is uh, an empty feeling um, and, and, and greatly disappointing. Um, but you're saying goodbye to a class that you've been with for four years. Some guys' experiences have been better. Some guys have played more, some played less. Some have had ups and downs, but ultimately you've been around those guys for four straight years and for nine months out of the year, you've been around them almost every day. You know, I'm done here. And, and he has the opportunity to, you know, start it back up all over in the fall and, you know, get a whole new group of freshmen together. And, and he has the opportunity to build another championship uh, caliber team. So I think, you know, for, from my standpoint, standpoint, having it be all over, I'm going to look back and reflect on all the good times, and there was plenty of them. Like I said, you know, I had the opportunity to play in a Final Four championship, or win a championship. Um, I was a part of some pretty special games, you know, just in general, you know, across the board, and that's, that's the benefit of coming to Hopkins is that's the reason you come here is to play in big-time games, and that's something we experience every year. So I'm going to look back and certainly miss it. Um, from that from that standpoint there's always a time to, to reflect there are moments where you walk in a locker room and I'll walk in next year you know and there'll be another number 32 and that may be the moment where I look at the whoever's wearing 32 and say wow had some special times and some uh, great moments with the former 32 um, I did it with 18 when Harrison graduated and for everybody, those moments come at different times. Um, it may be driving in a car, and you know you, you think back to, gosh, what a great win we had against Loyola, and wish we could have parlayed that into more. But you know, it was really great for the guys on the team. Um, 
I feel too strongly, and I think our staff, I speak for our staff, we feel too strongly about the guys that we spend time with and when they graduate to not think about those moments. I like to think I'm pretty honest. And uh, for me, it was so important to leave something better than I found. It's the one, th one of the things we talk about our guy, with our guys all the time. You want to talk about a lasting impression is here we are at Navy, a place where it's a uh, house of horrors for us right now. Uh, and we will change that. Um, I'm confident in that. Um, and we go into the locker room and we leave. And before we leave, the one thing, the last thing we say is leave this place better than we found it, clean it up right. Now Loyola is going to walk in and they have the other half of the locker room. And I don't want Loyola to walk into our garbage all over the place. And we left the locker room spotless. And that's our goal of mine. And it's a goal I hope our team shares, is that whatever we do, wherever we go, we leave that place better than we found it. Who's got the movie selection? Hey, hey, this is Marcus. He's talking to, talking to the camera. What up? Yes. Kevin, how are you? Good. Jack. I hope we're roomies, man. Good day. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to shake this man's hand. Good to see you. What's up, man? Getting some footage, Rex. Say hi to the camera. Zachary Palmer. What, what? Hello. John, John something, John. Hello. Our lovely waiter. Here we have myself narrating. My real nickname or my... No, no, your nickname as of five minutes ago. Who my pants, McCann? Yeah. Coach Guy. Are you excited about this breakfast? I hope it's good. It's a boot, boot fan. Oh, yeah. James, oh, yeah. James, 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 breakfast of uh, champions, probably donuts. <laughs> Andrew Blasco. <laughs> Financial pages is a little I'm not sure if you can read yet, but we sure trying. Country Rose, take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia, I'm a take me home.